Okay, so Hi, I'm Rosie. Oh, I'm Rosie and Jones. <laughs> and she's at Pray It Off? Okay, yes, I'm Rosie and Jones from Pray It Off. How's that? <laughs> okay, so, um, so you're going to be a spy while you're shopping for food. You really want to look at the labels, and I'm going to talk about that. So there's some good information on your Nutrition Facts labels. <coughs> And so I put on here, the first page here, I think I'm gonna skip the one where it says the rule, the sodium rule on here with the 5% and the 20%, because I'm gonna go back to that. That's kind of the crown jewel right there, so we'll, we'll save the good part till last. So there's gonna be a new nutrition facts label, and you probably have seen it on some products already. They're supposed to be all rolled out in the next <coughs> year or so. So all the products should have a new facts label on it. Things that have changed on it, so um, the new, the, the type at the top, there's going to be a bolder type on the top. So you can see calories from the left and the right on the new nutrition label. Mm -hmm. So the old, the new label is on one side and the old label is the first one and then the, the new label is in the blue. They're really making calories very prominent there. All those calories are and you probably know this because I'm sure Ellen has talked about this, but they all are referring to one serving. And so you can look on here to see that one serving is two thirds of a cup. If you eat the whole package and there's eight servings then you have to multiply 230 times eight. Yes, and then you know how many calories you ate. Okay, how many people use the daily value, the percent daily value on there? Oh good, I got, I, I've got a good, Group here, I'm going to tell you about that. You're going to like that. It's the easy button for things because they do the math for you. So they're also going to add on here, if you look at sugars, mm -hmm. they usually put the total sugars on the last label and now they're going to separate out total sugar. They're going to put in added sugars too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what that means is, for example, when you buy uh, yogurt with, I hate to use this one, but I'll use it anyway. Yogurt with fruit in it. Mm -hmm. This that's actually it is a good one. Um, they're going to separate the numbers out. So there's lactose, which may, is going to be in the yogurt, is going to be separated out from the sugar that they add, the actual sugar sugar um, that they add to the yogurt. So you'll see that that yogurt has 17 grams of sugar in it. 11 of that is going to be from the yogurt, and then the sugar that's added to it will be the other six. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you don't care about the, the lactose in it because that's natural and it's good for you. And the same for fructose. So um, for example, Raisin Bran cereal, when you go to the grocery store and you pick up Raisin Bran right now, it says that there's 18 grams of sugar per serving. They're gonna separate out all those raisins that are in there because that's a natural good thing for you to eat. It's a dried fruit. So they're not gonna count that as the sugar that's added. They're gonna count that as fruit. All right. So I think that helps us when, when we start to count sugar in the future, because we have those numbers now, we'll be able to count them more efficiently. The, the sugar gram, I'm sure, is next. Okay, so um, what else do we have on here? Um, this larger type, and then I'm going to go on to the percent daily value. So we'll go on to the next one. So reading this label, this percent daily value that you see over on the right, and is the percentage of nutrients that take up, <coughs> takes up the 2,000 calories that these are all based on. So this whole Nutrition Facts label is based on a 2,000 calorie diet. So if you see 7% of sodium on this product here, that means that out of the 2,000 calories, you've taken up 7% of the sodium that would be included in that which isn't too bad. 7% is not too bad. That was my question. You yep. see the sodium and everything, but like, that's what I wanted to ask. What is good? Like, what should you look for? How okay. low should it be? Low? Okay, so when you're looking at this and you're looking at the Nutrition Facts label for the, the daily value, 5% is considered, 5% or lower is considered low. And actually with the FDA rules, they could put low sodium right on the front of the label. They can put that as part of the name of the product. If it's <coughs> above 5%, then they can't. If they have a product and they reduce the product sodium by 25%, then they can put reduced sodium on there. Um, 
And so there are certain things, there's certain meanings to it. If it's high in sodium, it's going to be 20% or higher. So you don't want anything that's over 20%. Try to avoid that at all costs, all those 20% or higher. And if you look at the soy sauces that we were just talking about, they're, they're going to be like way up there, like 50, 60%, maybe even more of your intake. So look when you go back and then just measure it out. Try to scale it down as much as you can to still include that because it does add flavor, <coughs> but you just have to learn to live with less. Yes? Um, I have not seen that yet. I think that was something What was that, the question? So the question was, if they raise, if they reduce the sodium, are they going to increase something like fat or sugar, I think is the, yeah. Yeah. the culprit right. there. And I think not. I think that was something that used to happen, and they try not to let that happen anymore. So um, yes, that's my answer. We hope not. How's that? <laughs> yeah. OK. Um, okay, so so also if people like to look at milligrams, 140 milligrams is usually per serving is about 5%. But I like the percentages because it's a quick, easy, they do the math for you. You can kind of quickly look at the product and that nutrition facts label and if you see it's 5% or closer to 5% than 20%, then you know. Mm -hmm. You know it's low. It's a quick, easy button. Does that make sense to everybody, the percent yeah. daily value? Okay. I like that. Okay, so then we go to um, consider making the sodium swap here. So there's some products on here that people buy, some seasonings, and you can see that if you even just change from one seasoning to a lighter version of it, mm -hmm. and light, you can't always trust that word light. So you got to really know what you're, <laughs> you know, it's different for every product, I think. But this one actually does have less sodium in it, that, that seasoning on the top. And then ketchup. Ketchup, they're all the same. Except, I just found at Wegmans, um, they have a low sodium, low, a no so low sodium and low sugar ketchup there. Really? Oh, I thought. <laughs> it's great. It's called a like tomato. Is it, I know. is it a Wegmans it, brand? It is a Wegmans oh, brand. Okay. Yes, it's a Wegmans brand. Okay. So I thought, oh, wow, that's just, that's perfect. I actually wrote them a letter when I got this this grant, and I said, and I don't, you never know where your letter goes when it hits the yeah. Wegmans, but I sent it right to the dietitian there because mm -hmm. I've talked to her before. And I never heard from her, but then this shows up in the grocery store, and I'm thinking, hmm, I wonder. Um, <laughs> years later, but okay. And then beans. So we all know canned vegetables and canned vegetables mostly are going to be higher in sodium. I think you know when you when you open them up, if you even with the ones that are low sodium, because they're still going to have a little bit of sodium in them, um, in the brine that they put on them to keep them nice. I would still rinse it off, really rinse them. Mm -hmm. And I, I've read that you can reduce the sodium another up to 40% by just rinsing them. Mm -hmm. So it's worth to really rinse them off. And then the next page is more products. So again, looking at your labels, hint of salt on the Triscuits instead of the regular. Soups, those Campbell soups, there's four, uh, like four <laughs> kinds of Campbell soups that are all chicken noodle. And so one is low, none of them are low sodium. None of them have the, could ever put low sodium on the front of their label. But one of them is a healthy request, which they're saying is the lowest one. I really think that the American Heart Association one with that seal on it is a tiny bit lower, but I think that's as low as 17% of your daily value, the, the American Heart one. So that's way closer to 20%. And, and wouldn't you agree, Roseanne, that it's a lie because it says it's one serving and no one, I mean, who has a half a can of soup? Yeah, Usually no, people have yeah, the yeah. whole two and a half. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, most people in this group do at least. <laughs> a narrow bread soup. Oh, yeah. Very high in sodium. All Very soup, uh, yeah. Panera bread soup is high in sodium as well as almost every other soup on the planet, I think. So, 
Making them at home is a good idea. They do. Low sodium. All right. I, can, I take back the Amy's thing. I take back the Amy's thing. <laughs> we'll give them a break. Um, yeah, so there's, there's a whole thing with the soups. And yes, again, I think I saw in your packets that you got, there's, there's another page that goes with the, the nutrition facts label. And that page talks about how these new labels that they're making are going to reflect the amounts that people actually eat. And there's a couple of examples on there for soda, which I don't like because I don't want anybody to think that a 24 ounce soda is one serving. That's very upsetting. Mm -hmm. but, um, but the other one on there is ice cream, you know, the Ben and Jerry's ice yeah. cream, the little ones. Mm -hmm. And people, they said that there was four servings in that and they changed it to three, which kind of fit. When I eat ice cream, that's about a third. I do eat a third. I was like, wow, I'm middle America here. So I get it. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just like that. So they did make them a little bit more realistic. Soup wise, I don't know. So it's what you're talking about where on the page that says new nutrition label and at the top it says serving sizes updated. Yes. So that's what's changing for some products to yes. show it's more. Yeah. And there's actually there's another sheet in there that has um, it's, it's a big sheet of just the label, and then on the I think it's at the end of all the slides. We'll look at that in a yeah, little while. We Let's, that, yeah. We'll continue on with the slideshow, yeah. okay? And then uh, they have uh, instant the oatmeal next. Mm -hmm. So if you buy just plain oatmeal, it's going to be a lot lower in sodium and than if you buy it flavored. Mm -hmm. And you can flavor it yourself. You can put a little pinch of brown sugar and some... Fruit. Cinnamon, some apples in it, cut up some apples this fall or pears in it. Delicious. And it's better for you to get more fiber that way. It's all fiber keeps you full. Remember that. It's a big thing. All right. Let's see. I think that's it, right? Okay. Um, okay, so what do I think about frozen foods? So I think you should definitely buy frozen vegetables over canned vegetables just because of the sodium factor. Unless you buy vegetables that come in a can that don't have a salty brine on them. Um, but you do still have to be careful of frozen vegetables that have like a little cheese sauce or something, any kind of sauce on it. That's just salt. They're just adding salt. So just buy it plain. I love frozen vegetables actually because if they're picked in California in December and because we're not growing it here, right? Even if we grow it here sometimes, you know, it's still fresher to buy it frozen because they'll pick it and they'll freeze it in the same day. And so you're getting a very fresh product when you buy frozen veggies. And, and then you don't waste them because you can open the bag and take a handful out, use it, wind it back up, put it back in your freezer, and then you never waste. You don't have to waste anything. So I like that. Um, okay. So no sauces on them. Fruit. Fruit, you know, they might have some sauces or sugary things on fruit too, but um, if, if it comes in a, in the, probably not if you're buying it frozen again. So I really endorse the frozen <coughs> foods, except if they're adding other things to it, sauces and that sort of thing. I think everything else, if you're buying frozen dinners, pizzas, anything frozen, it's going to be very full of sodium because they want the product to stay the same. So. Like for pizza, they want it to maintain that shape and everything about it. And the only way that they can do that is just by using a lot of salt to keep it the, the same as when they put it in the, when they first froze it. So there's no way to get around that. There probably is, but they're not trying yet. How's that? <laughs> Hopefully they will. They'll get their act together. Because they know that we're all, we're, you know, looking at everything now. Okay, so when you're... Oh, here's a couple more for you. So things that I found that are really high in salt, which I'm very surprised about, are bagels. So bagels are so high in salt, as well as the wraps that we all think are so healthy for us. You get that spinach wrap and you think, look at me, you know, I'm eating a spinach wrap. This is great. They're, they're like 800 milligrams of sodium. It's like super high. Yeah. And, it's, and the same for those bagels. <coughs> Um, 
little little anecdote for people here. A bagel, just to give you a little perspective. A lot of the bagels are this big, you know, you see them. Like the ones in Panera, for example. They're about five ounces. When you look at the the my plate, I think you've heard you may say you've talked about this before. When you've looked at my plate before, you need six ounces of grain a day. When you eat a whole bagel, that's five ounces right there. So then you don't need to eat much more of a grain for the rest of the day. So either buy what we call mini bagels. We used to call them mini bagels, but I don't know. They're smaller. They're probably about two ounces. I'd recommend those. So buy smaller bagels or just eat half. Because that's still two and a half servings right there. So a little anecdote for you. A little sidebar. Okay, so here we are. We're dining out. Things to look for on your on your menu. You want to look for words like pickled and smoked. You want to avoid foods that have broth or soy sauce or teriyaki sauce. Um, any sauces really. Uh, you want to look for. You can ask the server to serve you. Just not add salt to your food while you while they're cooking it too. You can make a special uh, request that way. Cheese, of course. Somebody mentioned cheese earlier. Uh, you can ask for less, or you can ask them to hold, just mm -hmm. not give it to you at all, because that's pretty high in salt. Um, always feel like you should ask for salads or the vegetable of the day instead of French fries. That's an easy thing to do, also, and they're usually pretty amenable to that. Um, and any sauces, gravies, dressings. Try to put them on the side because you can just use a little bit. You can dip in it if you want the sauce and you won't have to have the whole thing smothering your food. We're going to stop right yep. there, Roseanne. Yep.